Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with me today. As we wrap up, and I explain to you the best that I can, the murder of a 15-year-old. And what I'm about to tell you is an absolute poop show. Here it is. Let me start by telling you none of these people work. The 15-year-old's not in school. Every one of them lied about everything. And as I lay this out, you'll understand all the confusion. Let me start with Jace Gavia, who's 23, and Pierre Salver, who's 34. They're cousins. Not only are they cousins, well, I guess they kind of work. They run a trap house, or as it's known in the neighborhood, the weed house. And Jace is known as the weed man. So I'm going to talk today about the foundation of all of this problem. It's that thing that people want to call low-level, nonviolent drugs, marijuana. You know, it's not a problem. Well, it's not a problem until you get a 15-year-old kid shot and killed, right? So anyway, Jace, and we don't want to forget him, he just got out of prison where he did five years. And this was having to do with shootings, right? Pierre, in 2013, got out of prison after doing four years for robbery and burglary and child neglect. So let me take them off the page for a minute because on that particular night of this event at their trap house, this all happened at the weed house, Pierre was in a short-term rental up at the northeast area of the county, so he wasn't directly involved in this. I highly suspect he was either partying or selling dope or both. Jace was apparently in the weed house when the shooting occurred, and of course, knowing the cops are coming and the shooting outside, he flees. So we're back to an event, and here's what happened. Jace talked to Lilia, who lives across the street. Lilia is a convicted felon. She wants a firearm. She can't buy it legitimately because she's a convicted felon. She has to buy it off of the street. So when Lilia tells Jace, I need a firearm, he refers her to Rashan. Rashan's 20 years of age. Now listen to this a minute. Listen clearly. He's 20 years of age. He's already got 53 felony charges lodged against him. 26 misdemeanor charges lodged against him. And he's been to prison. That's right. So he just got out of our jail. He got a year sentence in jail. So, I mean, we take him out of the ability to commit crime for a year, and he's still got 53 felonies and 26 misdemeanors. I digress. So let me get back to the storyline. So Jace hears from Lilia, I want to buy a gun. I'm a convicted felon. She hooks him up with Rashan. Rashan's in Bartow now. So Lilia and Rashan meet up at a Circle K, and guess what? Rashan sells Lilia a gun. So here's the gun that Rashan sells to Lilia. Did I happen to mention to you that the gun is stolen in a burglary out of Lakeland where Rashan suspected of committing the burglary? They negotiate the price. Lilia agrees to paying $200. So now Lilia has a gun that she takes back to her house, which is across the street from the weed house. So Rashan 
calls Lilia up and says, hey, I want to give you some more bullets or sell you some more bullets. And Lilia thinks this is an odd statement, but hey, what the heck. She gives Rashawn her address. Rashawn, in the meantime, this is Monday, September the 11th. When this conversation takes place, it's prep about 1030 at night. So Rashawn then goes by and picks up Kwashan, who's 15 years of age. So Rashawn and Kwashan go to Winter Haven. Rashawn is going to deliver bullets to Lilia. What he really wants to do is hook up and have sex. And then they're up there, they're going to buy some marijuana. So Koshan gets in the call with Rashan to go buy marijuana, and Rashan's going to hook up with Alilia. So they arrive there. It's sometime just before midnight. Koshan is no place to be seen. He's out of the car. When Lilia comes out and gets in the front passenger side of Rashan's car, well, they talk about bullets and they talk about sex. Lilia has a purse with money in it. While Lilia is talking to Rashan, she says, uh, things don't seem just right here. And about that time, Koshan opens the passenger door and starts trying to rob Lilia at gunpoint. So Quashan supposedly, according to everything we can put together, is trying, he's 15, is trying to rob Lilia at gunpoint. Lilia's fighting to hold on to her purse that's strapped across her body. Quashan's trying to pull her out of the car or pull the, the backpack kind of pocketbook deal off of her. Well, apparently... They forgot they sold her this gun. So now Lilia pulls the gun out of the pocket because she's being robbed at gunpoint and shoots Quashan, who's robbing her. Did you hear what it said? You can't make this stuff up. So knowing that they had given her a gun early and she's going out to set with Rashan, she puts the gun in her pocket so she has it and when Quashan decides he's going to rob Lilia, she shoots him, and down he goes. So she runs into her home. Rushan takes off and leaves Quashan dead in the driveway. He lays there about two hours. Lily goes into the house. She goes, I can't stay here. The cops are certainly on their way. So she leaves, and she's hiding for the next three days. She finally comes back on Friday morning of that week, and we grab her up. Now, I want to say something. Rashawn's charged with felony murder. Because Quashan is killed in the process of committing a felony against Lilia. Follow me? Rashan's mother is an honorable woman. She said, I'd not had Rashan in this house in six months. He's a grown man. He wouldn't behave. He was a criminal. Rashan's mother is a wonderful woman wonderful lady, and looked Rashan in the eye and told him, you need to cooperate this. You got yourself into trouble. You need to cooperate with law enforcement. She dressed him down in the presence of deputies. Rashan's mother did what mothers should do, and that's to make sure their children are held accountable. So he gave us a story Quashan can't talk to us. Obviously, he's deceased, and he's only 15 years of age, and he's a gang member. Lilia said, I was being robbed 
and I defended myself. At this point in the investigation, she is apparently the victim of a robbery, whereby she defended herself and shot the suspect, Quashan. And Rashan confirms that. She's still under investigation, and we've arrested her for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, tampering with evidence. Oh, by the way, she had a lot of cocaine and marijuana at her house. She was a drug dealer. So I guess when I said they all weren't working, at least this one, this one, and this one selling drugs. So maybe that's their job. We have filed dozens of charges against these four folks. That investigation is still underway. But at the end of the day, we have a 15-year-old kid that's dead. When mother went to bed, the 15-year-old kid was sitting on the couch playing games on his iPhone, like 15-year-old kids do. When she woke up at 3 o'clock to feed her infant child, guess what? He was not on the couch. She figured he'd gone to bed. And when she wakes up in the morning to the knock on her door, our detectives are telling us, her 15-year-old child was murdered. And that's a shame. It's a shame that he's a gang member. It's a shame that he robbed Lilia. This investigation's still underway, and the details are subject to change as the investigation goes on. But at the end of this investigation, there are no winners. Any questions? He has not admitted that. However, Quashan was not in the car at the time Rashan invited Lilia into the car. So did he think Quashan was out buying dope? Or was this the intentional ruse to get Lilia in the car so that they could go back and rob her of her dope, of her money, maybe even, heck, take the gun back that he had just sold. We don't know. What's the relationship between the The friends. Look, folks, when you live by the gun, you die by the gun. And that's, that's what we have here. These folks have been in prison. They've been in the jail. They've all got criminal histories. And at, at the end of the day, we have a 15-year-old kid that's dead. And mom said, he's 15, I can't do anything with him. No. They, Lilia went back into the house for an hour and then got in her car and fled and left this 15-year-old kid dead in the driveway, only to be discovered by someone else. The streets can be rough. And, and I've given you the 30,000-foot view. If we had time to get into the history and what sent all these people to prison, you would be shocked. You absolutely would be shocked. But guns and drugs end up with murder. Dr if you have drugs, you're going to see guns. If you have guns and drugs, you're going to see robbery. And if you see drugs and guns and robbery, you're going to see murder. And that's exactly what this was. Okay? Thank you all very much. You, you certainly can. They'll, they'll hold them all up for you. Have a good day. We're about to send out a, a uh, news release, and it has them all on there.
Matter of fact, I think she's probably already hit some. And then when she's done. And they're all in custody right now? It, except for Crochon, who's. They were all arrested over the weekend. Uh, I don't know for franchise okay. fee. Y'all ready for this one? I've had a couple of cups of coffee. I'm shaking a little bit here. <laughs> yep. 